close this door. Welcome back to SJU, where I clearly have the same opinion as every single person on this panel, and we weren't arguing about all different things right before this started, including gloves. What does that even mean? Ed Greer in the house today. Ed, What's we up? haven't gotten into it yet, so uh, maybe maybe in the next, <laughs> like, oh. give or take 50 minutes. We haven't talked that much. The <laughs> night is young. That's very, very true. Spenny G, uh, my partner in crime for all things similar. We have all the same movie oh, tastes. simpatico, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, and I don't think any of the movies you think are great are garbage. <laughs> Glad you're here. The world agrees with me, Roxy. <laughs> that is very true. Can't even deny that. And first time appearance on the show, she's coming over from After Buzz TV. It's Steph Sabra. What's up? I'm so, so excited party, to be here, guys. I hope we don't get into it today. I feel like I'm on my own wavelength today. <laughs> yeah, always. I'm living in my own world. Uh, but that's funny because today we are talking about duos. We're talking about action duos. And I'm more of a action solo star. <laughs> it's not true. I actually can't run a mile in any faster than 15 minutes, so uh, action movies would not be for me. But we have uh, action duos to talk about because Hobbs and Shaw is coming out. Also, a lot of other great stuff. We're talking about HBO Max because now they have this deal with BBC. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's Fan Friday. So uh, we're going to take some fan questions because that's what we always do. But let's start with these action duos because I want to hear from you guys. There have been so many great ones over time. And I know Ed and I just saw Hobbs and Shaw. Yep, lucky. definitely put them there. Why didn't you go? I wasn't invited. You want to know what's so sad? What? I had a plus one. Aww. I went stag, further oh. proving that I uh, am a solo act, but you should. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for the belated, can't take you up on it invite. Yeah, well, next time. <laughs> I don't know if it works that way. Uh, in general, though, do you guys think Hobbs and Shaw are a, an action duo worth noting in the top 10 or 20, or do you guys I think? Mean, I don't know. You guys have seen it. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I don't know. If I say yeah, it's like weird recency bias. So I think I'll, I'll relax on it for a little while, have a little action refractory period. But, and then, but they've, you know du they've duoed for a couple films That's what I'm saying. now. Like, yeah, but I wouldn't put those sure. up against anything dope. Like, uh, Frankly, uh, and we're going to talk about it later, but uh, there's some things, some new movies, some one of those John Wick duos. There's, oh. some, there's some stuff that hmm. I think is, is competing with that. Can so. you be considered a duo if only one of your names is in the title? Yeah. Well, he's the hero, so they are the hero, so they have to have another person be I think their side sidekick. Sidekicks count as duos. Sidekicks oh, you do? Yeah, duos. like Batman, Batman and Robin, Robin is an action duo. Okay, do sidekicks count as duo stuff? I don't think so. Mm. I think they count as sidekicks. <laughs> okay, okay. But All right, sidekicks I, kick back. <laughs> I, I guess no how... Jonathan Brandeis slander at this table. <laughs> How Chuck Norris was his sidekick. Oh, <laughs> hot takes, Remy. Oh, I did see a thing that ran, ranked action duos, because we were researching for mm. this, obviously, so we don't sound like stupid people <laughs> yeah. on, on the air. It and uh, it said that Bruce Lee and uh, Chuck Norris were an action duo. I was like, uh, no. no they are enemies. Together, confusing. Yeah. yeah. I saw that. Confusing. That's really confusing. No. Well... I kind of get it. Uh, <laughs> Roxy, you are contrarian as hell right now. I know, <laughs> you I know. You are on a solo journey today. <laughs> I, I really am, and I don't even know if I have many points to back myself <laughs> up here, but I kind of get that. Like, in some ways, don't you feel like some of the biggest villain heroes, all, like, I think, I almost think Batman and Joker are more of a duo than Batman and Robin. No. No. Okay. You can't be an action duo <laughs> when one of you is getting relentlessly pummeled by the other. Yeah. But you, you, they play off each other. Really exciting <laughs> relationship, just not a duo. What's okay. in that juice? Uh, I, told, Controversy. I told you, chlorella. It's, the, it's a controversial juice with chlorella okay, and Then what's in your auxiliary side juice? Oh, well, that's whiskey. Okay. <laughs> so in case anybody is wondering about that. Who are your guys' favorite action duos of all time, though? If you had to rank your number one, and you sent in like 15, so I'm going to need I you to narrow this down. Yeah. Give me your top one. <sighs> oh, my God. It's like Sophie's choice for him. It's it, really, be okay. it really is. Because like when you look at all the action duos, sometimes they're supposedly these great action duos, but they really didn't do anything that cool. In, inside the movie, and then you try. I, and then I said, and then I said, uh, like recency bias. But again, I saw John Wick three times, and John Wick, John Wick three, three times, and John Wick and Halle Berry's character with those dogs. They were tearing the whole warehouses of dudes up, and it was super awesome. And I think if they had three movies to do that, you'd be super impressed, and you'd be like, wow, that's great. Are you including the dogs in the duo? Yeah. Yes, 
Yes, I am. I don't know. If you are a character who is a master of animals, those animals are you and they count. If we were playing one of those role playing games, they'd be part of your hit points or whatever the hell. It's a sub duo. It's like a duo. Oh, it's a duo. Ryan, yeah. our producer, says sub duo. Right. Mm. It counts. Is that like sub tweeting someone? Mm. Okay, oh if you, if gosh, you, if you teamed up with Spirit from G.I. Joe, you'd have a you'd have an eagle too. Okay, fair enough. Oh, <laughs> so if you pair up with Khaleesi, the dragons are part of your duo? Yeah. Uh yeah. I guess so. I wow. feel like that's really unfair. Because I, Well, just pick your duo right. You, you just, you're I mean just the messed up that, thing is it depends on whether you think animals are sentient or property. You know, are they machines or are do they have feelings? Well, dragons certainly cannot be property. Dogs, yes. Oh, I feel really bad. I just said that. Spencer, what is your oh, duo? Wow. Give me one. Uh, you got to the nature of being yeah. from actions. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> just turned really hilarious. quickly. I don't like what I just did. I don't like it. I have no response. Oh, no, 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 I take it back. But do I? Spencer, uh, how? Spencer now I'm going to let you just uh, <laughs> twist in the wind for a little longer. Oh my gosh. Just sip that whiskey. Jameson. Um, mm. Like a half mast flag. Uh, I think like... <laughs> For me, I don't know how actiony they are, though there are a fair amount of action scenes in this movie. But I love the nice guys of uh, mm. Gosling and uh, and Russell Crowe because, like, just the interplay of the two of them uh, counts for me so much of, of the duo. It's like uh, you need the one's this type of guy and the other is that type of guy, and I think they pulled that off without any type of cheese. And like, they're both mm. likable in different ways, and they both kind of kick ass. Do you want a second one? Yeah, I want more nice guys. Mm. Yeah. It was really good. So good. I wanted to disagree with you, but I can't. Nice. They're a really good duo. <laughs> Steph, who's your duo? Uh, speaking of sequels, that actually did happen. Rush Hour 1 and 2, Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker. My it's just <laughs> the best. I've seen, you can't get over them. And I, what you were saying, the 1s and 2s, totally mm. separate personalities. Mm. And they go together so perfectly. I just never get over them. Where is Chris Tucker? <laughs> uh, he did a comedy special. Yeah. Do you, okay. is that, wow, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I had to adjust my microphone. <laughs> okay, uh, well, well, well no, he, he's, he's doing there. comedy. He definitely, no, no, no. He's doing comedy. He has uh, a lot of fans, and he's got to deal with Netflix. So, okay. well, there you go. Boom. I mean, yeah, he was making like $20 million a movie in the early yeah, 2000s. He like, chill. he's doing whatever he wants. <laughs> Same. Respect. <laughs> same. Respect. Exact same thing. It's interesting that all of our duos are guy-guy duos. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to, when I was coming up with uh, my picks for this, thinking about if there are any girl-girl duos. And I mm -hmm. could not come up with a single action. A duo I love that was, uh, it's action comedy, but still a duo, is The Heat. I thought that Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy, like, mm -hmm. she Go gets on. a lot of... Uh, uh, flack for like playing the same kind of character. This was like the best version of Melissa McCarthy and Sandra Bullock is uh, Touché. does great as the straight man in that duo and like they just had a great chemistry and it was like a really fun action movie. Well Sandra Bullock is for all intents and purposes an action star. Yeah. She, I mean yeah. she has that yeah. kick butt thing about her uh, where you totally believe it and Melissa McCarthy does not necessarily have that same thing, but I love that team up as well. Any guy girl team ups that we can think of that are? Well, I wanted to do um, uh, Michelle Yeoh and Jackie Chan. See what I did there? She gets mm. top billing um, <laughs> because she's really dope and super cop. And I don't know what they called it in China. I don't remember, but like super it was called super cop over here, and I saw it in theaters. And I was just really blown away how slick she was. And it was way before Crouching Tiger or any of that stuff. She's just super slick. And and her being, uh, she was almost more physically dominant than Jackie Chan was. She would when she came into the fight, it was like, all right, I'm gonna. Be Beat these dudes' asses. When Jackie Chan came into the fight, he was like, "Oh, I hope I don't get my ass beat." Yeah. You know, and those mm -hmm. they had two different styles, and they really played well off of each other. And she was actually the, the more aggressive one, so it was pretty sick. And who could forget Jackie Chan uh, and Jennifer Love Hewitt in the tuxedo? <laughs> <laughs> who the could remember? Me. Guy, Me. I could forget. Duos. I already forgot. Or does the, does the tuxedo <laughs> count as its own character? That's definitely a piece of property. If the dog counts, the tuxedo counts yeah, definitely. for sure. Well, but tuxedos have more sentience than I mean, uh, dogs have more sentience <laughs> than, than tuxedos. Than a sentient tuxedo. Oh, Oh my gosh. Turner and Hooch, nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that was that was also my, I had a special, I don't know if they have a graphic for it, but uh, a special, and maybe this is recency bias as well, but uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, Brad Pitt and Brandy the dog. They were oh. a great action duo. That's your duo? They're great. But, okay, Brandy's a but great But do you understand that partner. in that you made, you picked two? 
and then in the others you picked four because two right. dogs. You can't have it both ways. Yeah, you can't have your well, dogs both ways. You just cheated your own rule. Okay, fine. We gave it to I'll, you. I'll, 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 I'll tell you what. Cliff Booth and Brandy can beat up anybody. <laughs> so, so do okay. It. You mentioned before that uh, she was really sleek. That, that it was mm. slick. Mm -hmm. Sleek yeah, or slick? Slick. Yeah. slick. Mm -hmm. What is it that you guys think make great action stars? And what is it that you think makes a great action duo? What characteristics do these people have to have? Is it more about their backstory, their personality traits, their physicality? Spencer, for you. It's just all about fit because like there are movies where the performance and the action and the comedy have to like all blend together. Like uh, like I love Tango and Cash because everything about that is so heightened and so 80s and so stupid that like it just fits together. And then something like John Wick uh, where everything is sort of like somber but fun and grounded <laughs> and, and, and brutal and the performances reflect that too. It's just like you have to calibrate how ridiculous you are as an actor to how ridiculous the action is, and some movies do that better than others. Okay, Steph, what about for you? What is it that makes a great action duo or star? Action duo, I think it has to have dimensions because action films aren't technically my favorite, so I need like comedy, I need a like a weird or crazy past backstory, and I need them to have a good story together. Like it needs to be weaved along throughout the film well. So mostly about story. Yeah. What about, about for you, action. Ed? Is it more about the story, or is it more about who they are? Uh, uh, I mean, I think I, I would. I'm gonna shirk the question and go fifty-fifty because the best Shocked. movies. You. The, the, <laughs> the best movies do both. You know, whether the, you know, uh, I get you a movie that could do both. Mm. They have uh, good stories, like a reason why these characters have to be together, and a reason why there's tension for them being together or having to fight together or having to even fight each other. If we're going to extend it to your definition, being you know antagonists and and, and heroes. So basically, uh, I, I just think it's one of those things where you have to have that, as well as when it comes time to whoop some ass, I can't be spotting your stunt double every second frame. Oh, there's there's the wig. Oh, look, look, oh, now, now you gained 50 pounds. Oh, sleep fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just, you're just looking at the, uh, that, the, going back and forth with the stunt double. No, you have to, st yes. Halle Berry, I saw her do multiple roles, come up, shoot two dudes, yeah. spin, grab the dog, do a thing, do a thing, all in one shot. And I was just like, bravo. On that note, I was really impressed with Vanessa Kirby in uh, Hobbs and Shaw. I thought that she yes. did such an excellent job, and I think she's going to be one of our next big action stars. It's kind of how I felt about, do you guys remember Emily Blunt, Tom Cruise, oh, Live, yeah. Die, Repeat, Slash, whatever. Edge yeah. of Tomorrow, whatever oh. we call that movie <laughs> these days. Yeah. I, what is? What do we call it? What is the, what edge was the of, sec Edge, edge of, of Tomorrow, tomorrow Live, Die, Repeat. The whole thing? Blu-ray 4K. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I thought that way, I felt that way about her. Just yeah. there's something so believable about the two of them as an action duo, mm -hmm. and I think Vanessa Kirby, this won't be the last we see of her. Ed, did you feel similarly watching the movie? Oh, yeah, and, and there, there are certain times that Tom Cruise, I mean, Tom Cruise getting together, I forgot the character's name, but in the, a couple of less uh, uh, Mission Impossible movies, they're pretty slick together. I honestly yeah. cannot think of it. What well, is it's his name? It's confusing because Vanessa Kirby is also in right. Fallout, I think. And, but yeah. then his, you know, Ryan, the, what the is lady his name? that's flipping around with Tom Cruise. Tom the lady Cruise. that's flipping around with Tom Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> what is his Mission name? Oh, uh, uh, El Ethan. No, no, Ethan, Ethan Hunt and, and Elsa. Or is the Ilsa. No, I Ilsa. couldn't think of it. Ilsa. 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 Yeah. Knowing our stuff about action movies. <laughs> no one <laughs> The character <laughs> names. I mean, well, come on. I, I yeah. literally know none. Yeah, it's Tom Cruise. It's not Ethan. Yeah. yeah that's but I, I just true. think in general, movies are doing a lot better job. Uh, no spoilers for Hobbs and Shaw, but she isn't just a MacGuffin. She gets to do a lot of action. True. But she gets to do a lot of action past points where other women would be able to do action because the, they they would eventually go. Oh no no, just get in this box. The hero will come save you. Just chill out. Yeah. And it's it's hard. It's it's really never that, and it's really cool. Yeah. If anything, again, no spoilers, but she's she's very capable in mm -hmm. this movie. Probably mm -hmm. the most capable of all of them. Uh, and it was actually a movie that I love, and I can't wait to check this out because our very own Eric Goldman sat down with David Leach, who is the director. You also know him from the John Wick movies and they got to sit down and talk all about this. I know towards the end they also talk about John Wick uh, and Deadpool which is pretty cool so let's check out this video and we will be back with more news talking about Doctor Who coming to HBO Max and the rest Ooh. of the BBC series so we'll see you guys very soon. On my three. One. Ah! Woo!
Hey guys, Eric Goldman here. I am here with director David Leach, uh, co-director of John Wick, director of Atomic Blonde, director of Deadpool 2, and director of a small little indie movie this week <laughs> called Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. Thanks for having me. Yes, small indie movie. You directed the second Deadpool movie, so you already had this experience of sort of stepping into a pre-established world. What was it like coming in there? And, you know, because this was a spin-off film, was it interesting balance between wanting to make sure it didn't feel like a completely different universe? At the studio, Chris Morgan, everybody involved really, and Dwayne and Jason wanted to do something, you know, original and do their own thing. But mm -hmm. we knew we had to access the fan base uh, fast. You had these two iconic characters from the last three installments, and, you know, they're beloved, so you need to pay respect to them in respect to their world, but we did want to strike a tone that was completely different in that you see sort of in the comedy where we leaned into their dynamic more and even with uh, some of the supporting cast, we started to have fun with the movie that maybe you couldn't have in a fast movie. So How do you approach, you know, Jason and Dwayne and wanting to make sure that sort of they have their own spotlights? What's the dynamic for right. the way they fight in this film? I think you have to approach sort of action scenes and fight scenes from story and character first. Mm -hmm. And with this, it was actually pretty simple in a way. The whole premise of the movie is like, can this odd couple come together and save the world, right? When it's the fate of the world, it becomes my business. Vanessa Kirby is in this movie. I love her in this film as another member of the Shaw family. So what were your conversations like with her as far as, you know, the approach to this character and what her skill set would be? Well, I think there was concerns maybe at the beginning on her and it was reassuring her the whole time, like, you're going to do a lot of fight training with my team and we're going to train you like we train all the actors that come through 8711. You're going to be able to do it. And she stepped up, trained her butt off. And if you really watch the movie closely, Hattie's never really saved by the guys. And mm -hmm. that was intentional. And it's also a sort of a good message for, you know, movies like this. It's like, you know, our heroes had their own journey. She was as formidable um, and capable as them. And they, she was along as part of the team as a, a full on developed, capable member. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she delivered that. Now, Fast and Furious movies, you know, they escalated. They got bigger and bigger as yeah. time went on. Is it very freeing kind of entering into a world uh, where where more is more. I think what's great about the Fast movies is they've kind of, you know, they reinvent themselves and in the last couple incarnations they've really gone, you know, crazy yeah. and the fans have loved it. I took the reins of this franchise saying I want to service that as well and I want that experience as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. So I dug in and tried to create sequences that work in that world and it was great for me to, to have that experience. You know, they say the hero is only as good as their villain. You have a memorable one here with Brixton played by Idris Elba. Now he is something of a super villain. Uh, and again, I feel like, you know, that's if this character had been introduced right after Fast and Furious 1, it might have felt absolutely crazy. Now that the series itself, the franchise sort of built up in a yes. different way, did it feel like, okay, we can, you know, insert these things that are a little larger than life, a little like, uh, you know, the tech around the corner <laughs> with a character like that? Yeah, I think you can. You look at the last couple things, like even yeah. Cypher in the last movie. Yeah. I mean, she's dealing with a lot mm -hmm. of tech stuff that still doesn't exist. I think that the fact that Brixton has augmented reality, mm -hmm. you know, next generation prosthetics that provide strength, it felt near future enough that we could play with it. Right. Um, I think it's just the tone of the movie is heightened in a yeah. fun way that maybe exaggerates that feeling. A black Superman! But in terms of like, how far away are we from having that technology, it doesn't seem that far in some respects. Of course, you directed Deadpool 2, a lot of questions about the third one with Disney and 20th Century yeah. Fox, but I just feel like Disney is savvy enough to know that they don't want to wait too long to keep that character on the shelf. Do you think, you know, sooner than later, we'll find out something about what the, what's going to happen next? I mean, my guess honestly is as good as yours, but I guess in, in just sort of paraphrasing what you're saying, it's like Deadpool is so beloved and the world is so fun. <laughs> It seems like a no-brainer to just kick out another one as soon as they, you know, can, and they wrap their heads around how they're going to do it. And I hope so. I mean, I, look, at any Deadpool movie that I can be involved in, I would love to be in. With John Wick, you know, having co-directed this first film and helped create this franchise, are you sort of a, a proud parent now, seeing just how it's uh, gotten bigger and bigger, the characters become more and more popular? When you see yeah. a hot toy figure of John Wick <laughs> exists, <laughs> you feel some pride in that? I do. I really do. I think, you know, I have a lot of pride that, you know, the, that that first movie and the character that Chad and I were able to create with Keanu resonated in the pop culture zeitgeist as it has. Then there's also a huge testament to Chad of like, 
building the world out further in two and, and then delivering this incredible action movie in three. You know, I'd say the first act of John Wick 3 is some of the best action I've seen in a long time. And uh, I get so geeked out. Like I was at the premiere with him and I was really excited about like the knife fight in the shop and like the horse through Central Park and and I mean the motorcycle. It's endless cool creative ideas. Mm -hmm. so. I'm really proud of it. Well, David, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, thank you. Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw is opening everywhere this week. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Great job, Eric. Uh, awesome interview with David Leach. Glad you guys got to watch that. And we have a more incredible stuff coming for you guys. We got our second fandom uncovered. It's about Dungeons and Dragons and Spencer. I know you've seen it. Yeah, I just watched it more? yesterday. Watched uh, not a first cut, but uh, a, a close to finish cut. It's Ooh. got uh, uh, the guys from Critical Role in it. It's got um, Magic Mike Double XL's Joe Manganiello in it. Um, I have never played Dungeons and Dragons, but after watching this. I need to fix that. It looks so much fun. I want to learn. The community looks awesome. Like it seems like it's having this crazy resurgence that I did not know well, about. It really looks. It really emphasizes how creative. Yeah, Dungeons it seems like you're just is. doing like improv, but actually mm -hmm. not as obnoxious as yep. going to see improv. <laughs> so, and like uh. in private, so it seems really fun. Uh, I would definitely click this thing as soon as it's out, which I believe is tomorrow. It is out on Tuesday. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> but depending on when you're watching this show, yeah, that you could, could be, be tomorrow. Those Tuesdays. So it's knows? actually it's debuting on Tuesday, which means that we're not going to have an SJU that day because they're focusing on release stuff for this because this is a huge passion project. Yeah. Uh, for everybody here, and everybody's so excited to have you guys watch it. Roth is hosting, so it's like an SJU, but on the road at a Dungeons & Dragons convention. So nothing like an SJU, <laughs> except Roth. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited to check this out. I'm jealous that you already got to see it. Make sure you guys go check this out on Tuesday. Let's talk some Doctor Who. Oh, any, no. What, I, sorry, I just have I'm a little PTSD, PTSD about it. <laughs> so for oh, anybody yeah, who doesn't watch. remember, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. based off of a, what was it, $10,000? Extremely generous gift to our Women in Film fundraiser. They got to pick the Honest trailer, and we did not, we forgot to specify what movie. You know, we didn't say, we didn't mm -hmm. caveat it with what movie do you want us to do. So instead... She picked Doctor Who. And you guys modern watched. Modern and classic. You watched all. All? Well, seasons. I didn't do, have to do classic. That was We put that on Dan. But uh, but paired together, you watched every all, every season. Every episode and tracking down as much as we could of the stuff that's like not released and stuff. And so, yeah, we became Whovians by force. Whovians. <laughs> <laughs> Would it have been more helpful for you if it had all been in one place on, say, I don't know, an HBO Max? Well, yeah. I mean, it was. Um, <laughs> There's a, a, a like a Brit box, I think it's called, where you like they were all in one place. But I think uh, actually no, the the classic stuff is all in Brit box, and the modern stuff is all on Amazon Prime. So no, you're right. We could have uh, we could have saved some time with Maybe. with HBO uh, because great segue rocks. HBO Max <laughs> has secured a deal with BBC Studios to get the exclusive streaming rights to several of their shows. Now I don't know at this point all of the library that it includes, none of us do, but they specifically talked about Doctor Who, uh, beginning with its revival in 2005, so I don't know actually if they'll have... Uh, oh no, the classic stuff is yeah, lost to time. They, they might not have that. <laughs> but some people, like you don't care. Honestly, honestly, if you're making the decision to get HBO Max based on the fact that you're a big Whovian, mm -hmm. Whoville, sure. Who, uh, Whovian. Whovian. British. You can mm -hmm. just say British. If you're a big, <laughs> big uh, Who fan, then you might care about that. That doesn't start until the 2005 revival. They also might change that. They're also bringing Luther, uh, which is another series that everybody keeps telling me I need to watch, but because it's so sporadic, I never have. And the UK version of The Office, which I love. I'm curious about some of our shows that have then been adapted to Amazon, like a Fleabag, mm. or some of the shows that are so strongly uh, seen and viewed in America, like an Orphan Black, or uh, I look at stuff because she's a big fan of that show. Ride or die. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm wondering, does this help you guys in terms of HBO Max competing with the other streaming services? Do you think that this is a big enough selling point that they're pairing with BBC? Or is this just one of many announcements they're going to have to make to play in this game? Man, I mean, with everything on HBO, plus The Office, plus Doctor Who, like, they're starting to build a pretty compelling little library there. And if it's, it, what was the price point? They said $17 or something? Was that it? Oh my God, I think that, that, I mean, that would be really high. Well, no, yeah. that's, yeah. I, that no, includes I think HBO. Like, 
which is HBO is already like 15 bucks oh, or something. Oh, so it's like oh, yeah, three yeah. more dollars and you're having a. Dollar. I don't actually remember. Ryan, can you get the price point for HBO Max for us? Yes, I don't know if there's an official one yet. Last time I checked, it was being presumed it would be more than the what an HBO is right now. Will you, I'll see if there's okay. an official one. Uh, but, and also, uh, again, in this, in this world of Disney owns everything mm -hmm. and then everybody else is for the scraps. If you're getting some dope scraps, these are good scraps. Great scraps. And and you put them all together, and it's like, oh, look at this. This is a this. It, everybody's trying to be so niche, and the, if their niche is this high quality, super the super highest quality streaming streaming stuff, or some of the most high quality streaming stuff, all in one place, and uh, libraries of things that are pretty. Hmm. My my tea. <laughs> can you describe what you just did? Uh, what? Mm -hmm. I just want to know. Very uh, Doctor Evil. Has he spilled tea on himself. Who, who were you being just now? Uh, I don't know. So, somebody hoity toity who oh. likes BBC stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the Mountain Dew lobby against me again because <laughs> I'm real I'm really uh, uh I, I'm not really mindful of my words when I'm dissing brands. But look, <laughs> I, I like the BBC brand. It is it is quality product and to be able to be the American repository for BBC stuff, especially discontinued BBC, BBC stuff like Luther, that's another feather in their cap. But it's a specific colored feather, which is, I think, what Spencer was getting at. Steph, does this make you more likely to buy HBO Max because they are now partnering with BBC? Yeah, but I do wish that they unveiled like a little bit more. Like just to for us to know about three shows right now, I want to know the whole enchilada mm -hmm. for me to commit to it. Because like you were saying, there's everyone is becoming um, owners of everything, especially Disney. So it's hard to compete, and I feel like I need more. Especially when we oh, people aren't going to have enough money at some point to buy <laughs> all of these streaming services, mm -hmm. and we're going to have to start picking and choosing. Right now, I will say I do have... Not to brag, but I do have everything. <laughs> I have all of the streaming services, uh. but I don't have cable anymore. Mm -hmm. And at some point, and it's because it's too expensive to have both. And at some point, if having all the streaming services means spending more than it would to even have cable, I'm going to have to look at this and say, OK, which of these? Uh, with HBO specifically, are you guys still as confused as I am on HBO Max and on what it's gonna do with DC Universe and HB, HBO Go and any of the CW Seed or Warner Brothers properties. You made that one up. There's CW Seed. Are you you don't know CW Seed? That's, that, that's from your mind's eye. No, no CW Seed's a real thing. They have all the CW shows. Seed. CW Seed. Oh my God, don't say it like that. <laughs> That's what hey, kids, let's get CW Seed. Ryan, back me up. CW Seed, S-E-E-D. It's a thumbs up from Ryan. Thank you. CW Seed. No, no official price, by the way. On the, it is, we don't know. No price on HBO are. Max. Okay. It is a real thing where they actually have original content. That's where the Vixen show was. Mm -hmm. uh, that they, okay. we'll catch Vixens on CW Seed oh, okay. after midnight. Vixen, the DC character, yo. Okay. <laughs> they have a whole. Th I'm just curious. I'm confused, Rox. It's confusing. It's confusing. There's a it's lot like, going on, and I want to know everything that's happening. I need more information. That's mm -hmm. what I thought we were going to get at Comic Con. Clarity. Yes. Oh. And I did not receive clarity. Ed, are you confused, or are you I mean, just along for the ride? You know. You know. At this point, I know people who who write for the DC EU, whatever. The, DC the thing Universe. That has the, the, yeah, the thing that has the comic books and the shows, and uh, I, I root for them to still to have their stuff ported over. Over to Max because and that's if that is just absolutely just flat out everything that was on that gets over to Max it's all gonna get saved don't worry about it babies if that's the case then that, I'm pretty much sold because that was my thing I, I love all the Marvel stuff if there was a, if there's a Marvel thing which is gonna be I'm gonna get it and if there was a DC equivalent I would get that too and I'd probably try to X out some cable if my girlfriend would let me do you think then there's a world that HBO Max has comic books on it I mean, if they're smart, they'll just like overwhelm you with what you're getting. Right. Um, I don't see the the benefit anymore in splitting these things up because what you're competing with are the Netflixes and the Hulus of the world, where it's just like you could spend an infinite amount of time on there. That's yeah. what you need to compete yeah. with. And that time would count, I think. If somebody's on the comic viewer, yeah. I'm counting that. Yeah. I'm counting that as screen time. And if it's like mom is watching Titans because she really likes Beast Boy or whatever, and then uh, sure. the kid is reading sure, comics seems... or, or dad's reading <laughs> comics, and then the and then the kids are, are playing some interactive uh, something or, or like watching some kids version or whatever, some CW stuff. Yeah. On CW seat. Yeah. 
Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> do, do you guys think that uh, realistically they are going to focus on acquiring content that already exists and being the platform that you can watch it? Or do you think they're going to do what Netflix has done or that a lot of other places have done, start that way and then start to produce original content because there's no way to survive in streaming without making a Harry Potter series or whatever Warner Brothers has access to. I think they'll have to do that because there's so many new shows coming out. It, you can't you can't make people buy it off of what you think a show will be. So I think people will buy it if they know all these great shows are going to be there. Once they build the respect and the trust with their bu their buyers, then they can make original content, kind of what Netflix did. Yeah, it's like they kind of need the licensed stuff because that's what people mostly watch. Like, weirdly enough, there's a few hit Netflix shows and a few hit Hulu shows and whatever, but people are usually watching The Office, uh, they're watching Friends, or they're watching things that, like, uh, already exist and they have this huge bank of it that people can just veg out to mm -hmm. instead of, like, trying to sell them on here's the new series. Agreed. It was a huge, huge hit for Netflix that they are losing Friends in The Office. Yeah. That, they, that, uh, a hit to their stocks, I'm sure, mm -hmm. in the future, and and everybody. And signups are slowing down. Mm -hmm, which and, they've been and talking less about. Less screen time because people would put on, you put on friends and just go do everything in your house, clean everything, do everything, cook everything, yeah. come back. It's all it's still there. You, you, only you just so described many. literally every day of my life. Yeah. <laughs> you have been watching my household because that is me. Uh, still one of the biggest honors of my life to beat Spenny G in that TV fight. I demand a recount. It's fine. <laughs> I won that one. Seinfeld. Dole Loser. <laughs> uh, so this is from Eric. Uh, the HBO Now and DC Universe will still operate on their own as of now, but some of the shows will be on both. But there's nothing like Doom. Doom, Doom Patrol, Patrol is going to be right. Doom Patrol has been confirmed that they are going to be streaming on HBO and on DC Universe. I know that okay. also. So until something else is officially announced, they're still acting as if they're going to be off. HBO but, now and DC. But Universe to me, that's operating. not operating on their yeah. own when they're both streaming the same show. Yeah. So th that that just makes DC. Universe less attractive. attractive. Why would you get it if right. you could, if it doesn't... Well, all the good stuff's going to be on HBO Max. Well, so. I think they're going to have to merge it. Yeah. Me too. Me you, too. They just won't survive like that because we're like the nerds who will consume that, but the majority of people aren't. They want Friends, 30 Rock, everything that's mm. been out for years. Yeah. yeah. No, Eric, thank you for the correction via Ryan. And and I, I, I all those things are things that I, <laughs> all those things are <laughs> things that I am aware of, but it doesn't make me less confused. If anything, it makes me kind of slightly more confused. Used. Yeah. Uh, do you think that there's somebody out there who saw that this is happening, that Doctor Who is coming, or at least 2005 and on Doctor Who is coming to HBO Max and they were like, take all my money? That's fine. Oh, yeah. I will pay. So you oh. think that there's a big group of people that said, okay, I'm in now? Well, HBO is literally collecting niches. Right, mm. they're collecting niches. They got the Doctor Who niche. They're gonna get the. They're gonna get all the dog movies next. It's gonna be nuts. What's your deal? <laughs> What's your deal with these dogs? Oh my god! <laughs> well, it, it was a callback to my previous attempts at humor featuring dogs. Is it That's gonna, true. So, in the category, <clears throat> is the dog movies gonna be under duos? Or, <laughs> or where do we oh, I guess that? in your parlance, it has to depend on how many dogs the guy wields. <laughs> <laughs> If it's more than one dog, we, then it's not a duo. <laughs> we will have to wait. Pack. <laughs> yeah, it's a pack. It's so strange. We will have to wait until spring 2020 to see any of this anyway, so uh, I'm sure we'll have plenty of more updates before then. But now I want to get to some fan questions. This is a Spenny G. Roxy remix. Fan hey, questions. We already hey, tried to drop a beat. Drop a beat. <laughs> drop a beat. <laughs> okay, ready? I, I'm, I'm a great beat dropper. Did um, it. <laughs> Wait, what does the actual beat sound like? I can't think of it. You don't know. <laughs> Um, there, there's some beats right there. They're on the floor. <laughs> no, I was hoping JT would save me by actually playing the fan questions thing. Nope. JT, somebody save me. Somebody <laughs> save me. You're Nobody. driving this ship right into the iceberg. Let me fine. Oh, like I can go in the wind. Okay, fine, fine. Back to Roxy in the studio. Let's get to these fan questions. Alexis Abode uh, wants to know what is the best chase scene? Axel's Abode. Axels? Yeah. What did I call her? Alexis? Alexis. Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> 
Make fun of my dyslexia all you want, Spenny. <laughs> Axel's abode. Just want them to get credit. Yeah. Uh, Axel's abode. I'm sorry that your axles are abode. <laughs> Best chase scene. This is uh, via the community tab, by the way, in case you guys have any questions you want for Fan Friday or also throughout the week, because now we've been rolling those in. Make sure you go to the community tab. Axel's abode, best chase scene, either on foot or in vehicles, etc. Uh, one of my favorites has always been from Wallace and Gromit, the wrong trousers. Mm. What are your favorite chase scenes, Ed? Got a good one? Um, uh, the one in Point Break. With the dog? Yeah. And there it has a dog. A dog. He throws no! a dog at him. Ed, you have yeah. a serious problem. You Patrick Swayze throws a dog at Keanu Reeves. throws a dog. <laughs> but I'm not calling them a duo. They only work together once. <laughs> it, r- they surf together a lot. No, no, no. I'm talking about uh, Patrick Swayze and the dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm not calling them a duo. So that's the favorite. <laughs> Benny, you have a favorite? Uh, well, I, you know, I love the Matrix Reloaded uh, freeway chase scene because, like, I will, if that movie's on cable, I will watch until that scene, and if I catch it after that scene is played, I will change the channel. So well, it's that whole movie is built around that one scene for me. You know, I've never seen any Matrix movies, so. Didn't you just see the first one? Or have you still not no, I even still bothered? Wow. It's not that I haven't bothered, it's that I haven't gotten to it. Got to, I just haven't gotten there. Well, have, haven't bothered sounds judgy. Yeah, it was, <laughs> that, was super, that was super <laughs> judgy. So that so judgy. Haven't bothered no, really willing to judge someone who puts on Friends nine hours a day instead of. The Matrix once. It gets her through the day. <laughs> yeah. Whatever gets me through, Spenny. Jeez, staff chasing. Uh, chasing first comes to mind the opening scene of Deadpool I love and the uh, last scene of Atomic Blonde. That that chase scene was epic mm, to me. Yeah. It made the movie because I wasn't sold until then. Do you guys think that a chase scene can make or break a movie? Like, do you do you have movies where you're like, ant, eh, ant, eh, but the chase scene was so bomb that this movie was great? Yeah. Uh, they have to mean something. Like I, I have an honorable mention chase scene when uh, when Captain America basically when when uh, when Nick Fury uh, in Winter Soldier is down and Captain America has to chase Bucky for that first time. He do, he doesn't know it's him. Mm. He, he has to chase the Winter Soldier for the first time. That might be my and, favorite. And he, yeah, he's busting through walls. Good he's like one. Busting through walls and jumping over stuff and just like. And and it's just it shows the capabilities of both characters. It is really intrinsic to the plot. It adds a mystery that powers the whole second act. I mean, it, it does a lot for a little running and smashing. I love that scene. I think it makes or breaks it because it's kind of like the present you want it when you go see an action film, mm-hmm. specifically. Yeah, I think for me, I think it's it's Fast Five, right, with the safe through Rio. Oh. I mean, that Ryan so quickly just said yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan was like begging that one of us would mention that. Yeah, I mean sometimes. <laughs> the fast movies make the mistake of putting like the best action sequence in the middle of it and you're like then the finale is like Vin Diesel punching a garage to death or something <laughs> like well this okay uh, but this movie ends on the highest note possible and it's just like a kid playing with his toy cars smashing yeah. everything up and it's, yeah. it's perfect do you guys prefer a heist scene or a chase scene uh, By the way, I didn't realize that I was the fan all of a sudden, but I am, and it's Fan Friday. And I'm, I'm a fan of all of you guys, so here's my Fan Friday. High question. sequences are like usually the, they're so good, or when they're done well, they can be like the best, most tense moments in film with like so much tension and release and, and reverses and stuff like that. Whereas I think like. You can still get surprised by a chase scene here and there, but they're all, a lot of them are kind of the same, where it's running down the alleyway and like throwing something behind you to stop the guy and like <laughs> and, that, and all the fruit vendors. So these many poor fruit vendors <laughs> in these movies. I, d- I can't so think about them. So many melons just on the <laughs> ground, all broken. No, that's who you care about. What about the people whose entire like apartments get annihilated by people? All right, Roxy, like, make it real. Yeah, okay. Jeez, bring walls. me down to earth. Yeah, oh my Steph gosh. Heister. Chase. I think heist because you can revolve an entire film around one heist scene, but I don't think you can do that with it. With Fast Five, technically a heist and a chase at the end because they have heist. And that's why you love it so much. <laughs> yeah. That's Both why you love it so time. much. Yeah. Heist all, chase. All I can think about heist. for Chase right now is watching that episode of uh, what was the O.J. Simpson show? Oh. It was the oh, entire the Bronco. OJ. Yeah. Which Simpsons? one? Yeah. It's a very Team low version. speed <laughs> chase. Yeah. Yeah. They were dropping O.J. remixes right. all day. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Should I have dropped a beat? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. It's like a 
don't. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, doing like the Carmen good. San Diego rock cappella <laughs> intro. Let's be a jam on indoor. <laughs> It's got like La Jolla seals. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think that was good? I feel like I'm getting better. I think one of our talented viewers will be able to remix that into something. Maybe it will yeah. be Kevin Wenger. Was that a good transition? Yeah, yeah, Kevin Wenger, our next Fan Friday question. Uh, Kev Wag Kevin. Wagner. Kevin. Wagner. Wagner. What the hell? <laughs> one letter at a time, right? And also, Ke Kevin. Kevin Wagner. How would you guys say that? Kevon okay. Wagner. Kevon Wagner. Are there any TV shows <laughs> where you didn't like the first, first or second episodes, and by the third you liked it? Love this question. Love a good TV question, Kevon. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why it's so hard for me My to say. My favorite Kevin. series long arc of SJU is Roxy learning to read. <laughs> <laughs> it's a str the struggle is real. I'm actually the worst read out louder ever. I highly doubt that. No, it's, a, it's <laughs> really tough. It's really tough for me. Yeah, I just host all these next shows when I can't read. Uh, <laughs> literally just heard your voice over. We're not book junkies. <laughs> Jeez, guys. Uh, so, Steph, what about you? Any any TV shows that you liked after a after, few episodes? Yes. Uh, animated Rick and Morty. Yes. I yeah. wasn't sold, and then I was ride or die. I'm wearing Rick and Morty socks right now. And then I not, wish you could show them. I They're know. very cool. Uh, we could try. We could go for it. <laughs> yeah. Kick. It's okay. Woo! It's gonna be tough to jeans. <laughs> yeah. We did it. Way nice to go. shot, JT. And you just hear like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like rip my pants. <laughs> And Mad Men. Mad Men took me like a mm. season, actually. Wait, I watched only the first six episodes of Mad Men and then I stopped, which is bad to say because I'm a TV person, what? but I could Takes not. Takes you a season. Oh, okay. Then I guess mm -hmm. maybe I'll get back into it. Spencer? I mean, yeah, there's shows where I haven't liked the entire first season of them. Uh, Seinfeld was one of them. Uh, not the, for specifically the first or second episode, The Wire was really hard to just get into the cop and gangster dialect that they, like, it was very Baltimore and I just literally could not understand what any anybody was saying. But then you loved it? Then I loved it, yeah. Then One it's of the best shows. Best shows on television. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's most TV shows, especially comedies, where, like, it just takes a while for you and the show itself to, like, get, it, settle into a groove and, like, settle, set up, this is the premise, and now you can just make us laugh. Ed, yeah. uh, I, I, I have this weird thing where I'll, like, dismiss a show. I like tell my girlfriend I hate this show, and then she'll be like, "Oh well, I'm about it." And then she'll watch the whole thing, and then I'll come back later talk about this thing is great, and she's like, "You suck." You know what I mean? That, that, Wait, that, so. <laughs> because because I, because I could have watched it with her, but I could have been down. What's your I deal? Struggled What's through. going on in in your brain? There are certain shows like like Archer. Take for for example, I just hated all the characters right off the biz at. I thought they were so venal and so monstrous, and I didn't care about their stupid adventures. And they were animated, so I knew they weren't going to die. Venal and monstrous. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you turn back into like a dowager, like oh, <laughs> the pinky went and came back up. Well, first he's said, venal, monstrous heathens. Well, and and, and some of the other characters out. were such That's slatterns. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I, I just I, it, it was like. I didn't like any of them. I didn't like any of them, and I didn't care about them at all. And they lived in a world that I thought sucked. It had no real rules. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, this is dumb altogether. And then I came back to it. Like I watched, I think I watched season two or three before even watching the rest of season one or two. And I was like, they got it. Yeah. Look at them. Look at them do it. Look at them work. This is good. And then I went back, and then I informed myself, and it's and it all came together and, and it cohered into like you're not supposed to like these people. Just let them let them let them have these adventures. Let them have these pains and stuff, and then reset. Do you it's have a fun. hard time with it's always sunny? Yes. Okay. Yes. First season yes, also. I do. Me too. Great. Yes, I do. But yes. then, oh, because exactly what you just described, you could have mm -hmm. been talking about that, where you totally. just yeah. hate you hate them so much. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's one of my favorite shows. I love watching right. crappy people. Mm -hmm. Girls is like that. Yeah, same exact oh thing. Oh, my God, you all suck individually. Yeah, all of well, you. I think that's the first thing I hate watched the whole series. Like, I hate watched all of Girls. I was like, <laughs> yo, I hate this. Cue it up. Yeah. <laughs> I do that yes, I'm still watching. My, my one like this, though, and just based off the title alone, it describes exactly what you're getting but still I was like ooh you're a bad person Fleabag I watched mm. the first couple of episodes of Fleabag not enough people are watching this show so good. hopefully if it, it goes from BBC to HBO Max then <laughs> maybe more people will watch it Look, well isn't it on Amazon it is on Amazon yeah but is it an Amazon original though? I thought it was an Amazon original they do that no. all the time where they like buy something yeah. from another it channel oh yeah yeah, yeah you're right, you're it right. Was a, Bezos you know. yeah it, um, <laughs> 
What, what is her name? Phoebe Amanda Waller? Phoebe. Phoebe. Did I put it? No, I'm Amanda Waller. Phoebe Amanda Waller. <laughs> I just threw Amanda Waller. Somebody make a visual mashup. I literally mashup just threw Amanda, Amanda, Waller. Amanda Waller's name after Phoebe Waller Bridge. Yeah. Phoebe Waller Bridge. Uh, yeah, I was not that far off. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she runs the Suicide Squad, but also is writing talents. the next Bond movie. But also, people don't give enough credit for Fleabag. Fleabag is super great and all that, but the woman who's in it, who stars in it, Phoebe started, Waller Bridge. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. <laughs> Amanda Waller it up. So I'm I'm saying uh, she wrote like this play that she did a billion times and like built the show out of it and then ca- got herself cast as a character yeah. and and does such a great job and that's why it's so it's so theatrical and then, so to and the audience. And it's also the showrunner of Killing Eve. Killing Eve. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, and I'm just she's like a, she's a beast. That's yeah. amazing. And amazing. and like I said, is writing like, the next Bond movie. I was like, what if Shonda Rhimes was inside her show? Yeah. Uh, that's, I love what, Shonda. that's what you, that's what it is. That, you awesome. just gave me like the biggest nerd I'm orgasm. <laughs> She hasn't done that yet. Yeah. That's just like I'm the I'm the scandal. Yeah. Me and the president. <laughs> That's what you meant. <laughs> just pulling <Yeah>. back. <laughs> or how to get away with murder. She was off yeah. herself very quickly. Yeah, I could cry. <laughs> kind of like what uh, Kurt Sutter did in in. Um, yeah. If Tyler Sons Perry has Anarchy. Medea, so, Shonda Rhimes should have whatever. Yeah. Bring Shonda it Rhymes back to this wants. though. I hated the first couple of episodes because watching there's something about there being so few female leads on TV shows and watching one who's an actual piece of crap like she's mm. so bad and I was like I wouldn't ever act like that and just on, on my hoity <laughs> uh, I would never uh, but when like totally I absolutely would and probably just as big of a flea bag as she is I had such a hard time getting into the show because it's dark also mm-hmm. and really messed up but then I loved it and then my other one would be Parks and Rec that first season is yeah. garbage oh, I think yeah. Parks and Rec is almost it's, everybody's it's one that chat mentioned the most. Yeah. Really, right? Parks yeah. and Rec is everybody's because they had a whole extra character like hey who is this dude we're cutting him out of the wedding photos yeah. this guy sucks it was <laughs> it was not good and I didn't start watching until season two when people told me to go back and watch because I was like I'm not I watched the first episode I was like I, this show sucks yeah really it wasn't bad. good Yeah. and I'm not talking about the Actor, I just want to make that clear. The chat, like so that guy's I brother or something. I don't even remember who you're talking up. about. There, there was a whole extra character who you did not miss the whole rest of the series. I think he was in the first two seasons, actually. You wouldn't know. And then, he started he, and then he. No, no, then I, he I went back and watched one. Oh. Afterwards. Yeah, he, he's like he's, he's like this uh, cock of the walk in the office guy, and he's just like and, and, uh, Leslie Nope likes him and stuff. What's a cock of the walk? It's like a like a like a like a, a rooster, like a rooster, a and cock, the hen house. A cock of the walk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna use that. <laughs> it's an okay. old timey thing. Is it thing. a verb? We're bringing it back. Well, look, look, look. Is it an action word? Is it? <laughs> is it a noun? Is it an action I feel word? like it's old time. I like could Mr. get in trouble for saying yeah. that somewhere else. <laughs> like well, you say, yeah. like you're a cock of the walk. Yeah. Well, it's like yeah. look, uh, Mr. Burns. Like look at him strutting around like he's cock of the walk. Well, this yeah. man is cock of nobody. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's like an old timey thing. Super to say. old. Uh, I'm going to say on that note, I um, think that's the show for today, guys. Uh, walk oh, check the rest of it out on CWC. <laughs> <laughs> that voice right there was Spenny G. Spencer, anything going on that you want to plug, talk about? No, not not except the, the Phantom Uncovered D&D episode out on Tuesday. Which is not tomorrow, not tomorrow if you're watching today. Unless you're watching Monday. Ed, where can everybody find you? Uh, well, I have multiple entries in Old Timey Urban Dictionary. <laughs> I guess, <laughs> um, but also they can check out my uh, my podcast, uh, Nerd Goat Podcast. We just had Derek Robertson, co-creator of The Boys, on. Our and, show uh, is fire. Yeah, he really he really broke down a lot of things about it and the process of creating it and working with uh, great uh, Garth writers Ennis. like Garth Ennis and, and Garrett Morrison and stuff. So, I'd recommend uh, listening to that Nerd Goat Podcast and uh, Ed Gray Destroys on Twitter. Please follow me. Okay, Ed Gray Destroys. Yay. I never noticed that. Oh yeah. That's a good it's one. Yeah. It's super humble, I guess yeah. if you want to destroy all <laughs> I feel like things. mine's really boring. It's just my name. Add stuff to bra. No, I, agree. I wish it was just... Easy. Okay, add stuff yeah. to bra, not destroys. <laughs> kind of destroys. <laughs> it should be stuff to bra. Crushes. Crushes. Yeah. Mayhem. Crushes. Oh, mayhem. I said you were funny. Or the stuff to bra is so funny. Much. Boom. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> You've been competing with a bunch of comedians. Also... Don't pigeonhole yourself, you guys. You can do anything. Don't forget, guys, that the Comic-Con Movie Fight is out tomorrow on Screen Junkies. And other than that, we'll see you guys Monday. Bye.